Well, in terms of the way the the war is being waged right now, you have a chapter in your book um, that that you title Ukraine 2022, Putin's last war with a question mark uh, at the end. Explain that and then maybe talk about your your predictions then for where things go from here. I mean, look, I don't think that uh, Putin is, is going to be in a position to have another war in him because I don't think he's really going to have much of a military. I mean, because of the sort of a series of catastrophic blunders, sort of catastrophic seems to be my word of the day, which is so singularly appropriate in the context. But anyway, because of that, it, you know, it's so much of the best of Russian kit and Russian troops were squandered in the early weeks and couple of months of the war. And although, yes, Russia now has still a large military, it's mobilized 300,000 reservists and so forth. But in terms of the quality of the force, it's, it's, it's seen a dramatic decline. And it's going to take at least a decade, I would say, to reconstitute Russian forces to the level they were in January 2022. And that's assuming that Russia is willing and able to pay what it's going to cost, not so much in money, but in terms of industrial capacity. And it also presupposes that Russia will, for example, get the microchips it needs and all the other sort of basic ingredients. So, first of all, I think the, the, basically, you know, whatever happens with this war, Putin is not going to be in a position to threaten NATO or, or, or almost anyone else. Secondly, though, politically, this has been a major blunder. I almost said catastrophic again. There you go. In the sense that, look, Putin had made assumptions about Ukraine and built a whole strategy around that. And Putin continues to try and micromanage this war in terms of personnel decisions, in terms of you know what can be done. I mean, if one takes, for example, the case of the city of Kherson, which the Russians took, but was actually pretty much impossible to hold. Well, we know that weeks or months, Russia's generals have been begging Putin to allow them to withdraw because frankly, they were just simply getting hammered by long range artillery and could do nothing about it. And again, it took him a long time to be willing to actually allow them to do that, frankly, rational uh, with withdrawal. So, you know, I think, you know, th this is a very different war from all the other ones. It's much, much larger. It was clearly badly conceived, badly executed. And it's one in which actually Putin involved himself much more personally than in any of the other conflicts. And I think that's really important because of the political damage that it does him. I mean, he likes playing the political, uh, historical comparisons game. And at times he compares himself with people like Peter the Great and whatever, these you know, state building colossi of Russian history. Well, increasingly, he's looking more like the very last Tsar, Nicholas II, who incautiously identified himself with Russia's involvement in the Second World War, First World War, by making himself commander in chief, and who clearly had nothing to offer because he had, you know, he had basically the same amount amount of kind of military expertise as the mug from which I'm drinking tea. And all he could really offer was just, well, one more push, one more offensive, and we'll be in a better position to dictate peace terms. Well, Putin doesn't seem to have any strategy beyond hold on and eventually Western unity will fragment. They'll stop supporting the Ukrainians and the Ukrainians will be forced to make some kind of an ugly deal with us. Now, it's possible that that might happen. But the point is, there's very little evidence to, to base your entire strategy around that. And yet that's all he's got. That's all he can offer. So I, th I think you know, from, from this point of view, I think it's Putin's last war. Firstly, because it may well be that it contributes to his fall, his downfall. We'll have to see just how badly things go. Secondly, because even if he's still around, I think he's going to have much less capacity, to, you know, political capacity, to launch any other conflict. And thirdly, because even if he did want to, he's not really going to have the military to be able to do, you know, launch more than the, the, the smallest and most limited of, 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 of conflicts.